Morning Macedonia. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. See my little brother Big Jeffrey in the house. Magnify the Lord with me. This morning, this morning, Macedonia. Ain't it just good to be in the house of the Lord one more again? Ain't it just good to be in the house of the Lord? Lord, we give you honor. 
We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' matchless name, this is your service prayer. And all of God's people say it together. Amen. Amen. And amen again. This morning, saints, we want you to lift your hands in adoration of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Are you happy to be here? Hallelujah. that God gave us another opportunity to praise his name. Uh-huh. Amen.
me and give him some praise. Thank Lord. Thank you for just one more time. One more opportunity. Hallelujah. As our tears flow down our faces one more time. That we even have tear dust. Some people don't have tear dust. They can't even cry. But God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I look at the tears of first lady's face, those are tears for nothing. Those are tears of rejoice. Thank you. 
time, at this time, at this time, we would like to welcome our guests. If this is your first time in Macedonia or your first time in a long time, would you please stand and let us acknowledge you and love on you for just a quick minute. Amen. So we are family. So so we don't have any guests at this time. So I'm, so all y'all saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and we are kinfolk, right? Amen. Amen. No no guests. She don't want to stand. Okay, well, we'll acknowledge you anyway. God bless you. Thank you for coming and fellowshipping with us this morning. Uh, my name is Minister Cedric Lowe. I'm an associate minister here at the Macedonia Church House. And I would like to introduce you to our illustrious pastor, the one and only senior pastor, Bobby McKenzie. Yeah. I would also like to take this time to introduce you to our first lady, Sister Justine McKenzie. to introduce you to the entire Macedonia church family. Amen. So we thank you for coming to fellowship with us this morning. And at this time, Macedonia, would you please greet our guests and greet one another.
Amen, amen, amen. Amen. That's how you're feel it today. I understand that even though it's the first Sunday in March and it should be like really cold. It's nice outside. So we're feeling the heat on the inside. Isn't it a blessing to be able to feel the heat? Very familiar with Michigan, you know. All I gotta do is just wait a few minutes and <laughs> cool off. But we're thankful, we're thankful for your presence today. Uh, I was actually trying to see who was doing the announcements for today. Uh, all right, yeah, I'm gonna make y'all. We have our announcements for the week from Sister Alexis Miller. ministry will be taking blood pressures and vital signs for anyone who is interested. Please make your way to the conference room after the worship service. Health information will also be provided at this time so you can see Sister Jaleesa Atkins if you have any questions. For this next announcement, I need you to have a lot of excitement. Okay. We have an ordination service. Yeah. Our very own Minister Shanet Spicer will be ordained On March 22nd, you will be served out of the 11 a.m. worship experience. Uh, and the ordination service will begin at 3.30. Reverend Timothy Trostler from Macedonia Mount Creek will be the guest preacher. It is March, so of course we have a March luncheon. A uh, Lent luncheon, I'm sorry. And Macedonia will be providing lunch for the Lent service on March 25th from 12 to 1 p.m. This event is organized by the Albion Ministerial Alliance. All are welcome to attend. For our fifth Sunday fellowship on March 29th at 6 p.m., everyone is invited to build them on the Rock Ministries to attend the first fifth Sunday fellowship service of 2020. Reverend Paul Cohen from St. Paul Lutheran Church will be preaching. Now we have our obedience requirements. New members classes are second and fourth Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And then we have an amazing Tuesday night class at 6.30 p.m. And then on Wednesday, we got to follow it up with an amazing prayer service in Bible study, which is also at 6.30 p.m. And then on Sunday, we knock them off the park with Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. And our wonderful worship service at 11 a.m. Our weekly music rehearsals, triumphant adult phrase dance, we practice Sundays after the worship service. Voices of Macedonia and Sahila adult praise are Saturdays before first and third Sunday at 11 a.m. Chosen Generation and Sahila youth praise are Saturdays before second and fourth Sunday at 11 a.m. And the triumphant youth praise dance team is on Saturdays at 1 p.m. To give your tithe and offerings, go online to www.tithe.ly.com slash give. And if you need a ride to Bible study on Wednesdays at 6.30, Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. on Sundays, and for the worship experience at 11 a.m. on Sundays, please call Brother Atkins at 517-629-9240 to make any arrangements. We have an announcement from Lewis Chapel Church. They have a soul food dinner. The price for adults is $10. Children 10 and under are $5. The location will be in the lower level of Lewis Chapel. This will happen on March 8, 2020 at 1 o'clock to 4 p.m. Tickets are available, so please contact Frank Dunklin at 517-206-0041. And then, of course, March is Reading Month, in case you didn't know. I like it. 
everyone should enjoy reading. It's a huge part of growing up and staying literate throughout your lifetime. So the Vibe Young Adults Ministry, which stands for visionaries, inspiring believers everywhere, we would like to challenge our church family. So we are challenging Dominion. We are challenging Vessels. And we are challenging the youth to see who can read the most books in the month of March. The winning ministry will receive a gift card to go towards their next event. And the person who reads the most books will also receive a reward as well. So we want to encourage you to go down to Sterling Bookstore because they have someone there who will definitely help you out with, with any book needs. We have Sister Christina Crawford, who's at Albion College, who can help you. Albion Public Library offers a multitude of resources for us. So we just want to encourage everyone to read this month, get things going. We'll have a sign-up sheet as well so we can keep track. So happy reading. All right. Yay! Yeah. Happy reading month. Yes, sir. No March was a, a reading month, so praise God. Reading is from the month. You might as well sit down. Yeah, you might as well sit down. Before she, she know I love her. Before we get to that business, uh, someone picked up an earring, I believe this is, that someone may be missing. All right, uh, it's gonna be in this area right up in here. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit through the whole service holding my earring. That's for show. Praise God. Um, <laughs> no, that is not me. Praise God, Hallelujah. Uh, we are experiencing spring break for some of our college students, and we got at least two of our college students back in the house today. Let's see, Brother Demetrius Craig is back in the house. Yeah. Let's stand up, me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So off down to Tennessee State and now they come on home and I'm sure the mama and them is glad to see you, but I want you to know your church family glad to see you too. Amen. Yeah. 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 Then my baby boy is in the house. All the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina, AT, stand up, Jeffrey. Let us see you here. Can't see him. He's all the way back in the L, but he's back there. So we appreciate having our young people coming back. And um, we look forward to any others that are going to be experiencing uh, spring break over the next week or so that they come and let us see their faces too. It's good to see them. Um, I want to bring to your attention, I think Brother Ronnie kind of told it too, and I, I can't help but highlight it too. I'm just blown away at what God can do to okay. see this young lady in the house today. Yeah. This I've been in communication with her mother, Miss Faye Craig. Faye, I got you. They were in a head on collision. On this past Friday night, I believe. But God. Shaken. But God. Sore. But God. Bruised. But God. Isn't that just how life works? When it hits you head on and try to take you out, but God, but God will keep you in perfect peace. When you keep your mind stayed on Him, He'll protect you in the midst of a storm and even in the midst of an accident. And all I know is, I don't know why, I don't know how, but I know, but God is the reason that she is here today. I 
I got a call yesterday saying, did you hear about? And I was like, I ain't heard nothing. I said, well, let me call, because if they answer the phone, I know they are right. Amen. I called Sister Faye, and she answered the phone. So we are certainly continuing to pray for you guys, and we're praying uh, that uh, no one else have that situation. I know some mothers in the house, I remember when they went hit on collisions, and they're still here. Sister Yanita, I see you out there. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is able. God is able. Um, I want to take this time. Um, it's not only reading month, but it's Women's History Month. And I want to, they may not be able to stand, but at least wave your hand if you are one of the matriarchs, if you will, of the church, Amen. and you're above the age of 70. Amen. If you can stand, stand. Amen. But if you can't, just wave your hand. Amen. 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 We honor you this month. We honor you for who you are. And we want you to know how much we love you. Now, if you, you guys don't mind uh, sitting, I want Sister Martin to keep standing up. Everybody else can sit down. Because not only do we honor her for that age group, one of what we call our super saints, she is one of those. Uh, what do we call that thing? Miss Macedonia, is that what we call it? She is one of the Miss Macedonia. And so we honor you once again, Mother Martin. Amen. 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 Praise God for you. We love you. We appreciate you. But since it's Women's History Month, I don't want to leave all the rest of the women out. So if you are a lady in the house, you're a female in the house, and you haven't already stood, would you stand, please? So I ain't gonna get into all them age groups now, but this is that. See, when you're below a certain age, you don't want folks to know how old you are. And so we salute all the ladies. We honor you on Women's, um, Women's Month, Women's History Month. I think that's what it's actually called. And just know that we love you. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Well, since you were the last one standing, then we also just want to highlight again the first lady of the church. Since it's women's history, we stand like that. Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, I believe I got my date right next week. Next week, I want to highlight two things that will happen next week. So the first thing is that it is daylight savings time next week. You may notice that I don't really have to announce it in the fall when that hour fall back and you get that extra hour. But I would think we probably need to announce it when you're going to lose that hour. So govern yourselves accordingly. And I'm going to ask whoever changed the time on that clock, please make it right because that clock is fast when you change it forward next week please and then next Sunday next Sunday you really want to be here next Sunday if you happen to be an individual that is looking for a job uh, we will have an individual here uh, she was here at our uh, mental health fair she'll be here again I believe it's next Sunday talking about the jobs for the census and so those, and we're talking job for the census here in Albany, right here in Albany. So you want to be here if you happen to be uh, looking for a J and an O and a B, and you ain't reading your Bible and calling it Job. <laughs> looking, for, <laughs> looking for a job. Um, we talked about the ordination service. It was announced on the fourth Sunday. We are Amen. endeavoring to ordain Amen. Minister Shanette Spicer. Amen. Amen. 
So let me kind of prep you right now because I don't know, uh, I don't know if you, if we've had an ordination service prior to my time here, but I know this is the first one since since we've been here, and so this service is different than a licensing service. It's different than all that other stuff, and so she's going to be ordained, but she ain't going to preach. What do you do? And, and, and Master Lord, you're going to love what I'm about to say on this one. You're going to love this. You're going to love it. We don't take an offering during an ordination service. Oh, oh. oh. oh I thought y'all would appreciate that more. I could put one on the program. <laughs> so... For well, Macedonia, I know you love this ministry and you're going to support because this is your church and you wouldn't dare have something going on at your church that you could be at. And, <laughs> and you just decide not to be here. But if you happen to be one of those individuals that have been to churches that every time I go to church, man, they take an offering. And I ain't got no money to give an offering. Well, guess what? We got you. Amen. You ain't got to. You can leave your little money in your pocket or your purse. Amen. You're not going to receive an offering. We're going to be here to witness and affirm what God is doing in the life of this preacher. And so um, we, we're looking forward to that. But please tell everybody, and we need all of Macedonia. We don't have to worry about anybody else coming to help our stuff be successful if we show up. And so on the fourth Sunday at 3.30, we will endeavor to ordain, at least under my pastorate, the very first preacher here at the Macedonia Church. I sent some tension in there. I really do. I sent some tension. Because when other people are being celebrated and y'all just sit there like, ain't that happening? Lord. I sent some tension. Either I didn't explain it well or there's some haterade in the house. I don't know which one it is. Sister Charlotte, by the end of the service, I'm going to figure it out. Though. I don't know which one it is. So if you have some specific questions, come holler at me. Come holler at me. Now, I would caution you, though, if you're going to holler at me, make sure you have a scripture support what you're hollering at me. Wow. Amen. 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 Don't, 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 don't just bring me your opinion. Amen. What you was taught way back when. Yes, just bring a scripture. Amen. Just, that's, that's, that's all I ask. Just bring a scripture. And the Bible says, let us reason together. Yes. You ain't got to be mad with me on the sly. You just come talk to me like, and, and, and I would just caution you because sometimes I've learned, sometimes people disagree with me uh, in, in our congregation and disagree with me. And make sure before you disagree with me that you get all the information. And, and then once you have all the information, then if we disagree, now we're going to love each other. We, we can agree to disagree or whatever. But just make sure before you decide I disagree with that, that you got all the information. This young man right here had, a, had a, uh, a, a, a question that was brought to him this week, and it was based on a teaching that we taught here at the church. And he then repeated it on his uh, job, where that's his job to do. And the person challenged him, they're like, I disagree with what you said. Yes, sir. And he took him straight to scripture. Amen. Amen. And before he could finish reading all the scripture, they gave up. Like, I give up. Yes, sir. I surrender. Like, so I believe that we can come to an agreement if I have some information that you don't have. And I'm willing to give you all the information that you need to make sure you're in full support of what we're doing. Because what we try to do, we try to do this thing by the book. We, we really do. We, and not, 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 not by mama and book, by the book. And so, if you got some questions, please, please, please come see me. Um, I want you to uh, solicit your continued prayer for the Embry family. Yes, sir. That home service was yesterday, and I heard that 
Um, it was a great celebration in Amen. spite of the, the circumstances. And so I want to thank all of Macedonia for your support of that family on yesterday. Amen. And then on tomorrow, tomorrow, Lord willing, at 12 noon, 12 noon family hour for Sister Johnny Marie uh, Curtis. And then at 1 o'clock, and that will be held at uh, Kids Funeral Home. Yeah. And so, um, Lord willing, I will be officiating, and we will uh, have a celebration of life for uh, that lovely soul. And we want to make sure that we encourage that family. So <clears throat> continue to lift them up in your prayers, please. Yeah. Yeah. We're so glad that Sister Robbie Patterson is back in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Don't now have her medical procedure, and now she's back in the house. Amen. And so we thank God Amen. for for that. Um, according to the calendar, <laughs> you can get up now. <laughs> it is the first Sunday in March, and all that has a birthday in the month of March, would you stand at this time? All oh, praise God.
we want to get you in as best we can, get you out, because it's hot in here. Because y'all done told me, because I'm like, whoo, it's hot in here. <laughs> But we would be remiss if we didn't say thank you. Um, it's a privilege to pastor a church that I really don't have to beg you. And quite frankly, it may sound like sometimes I don't have to beat you over the head. I can stand here and say thank you. And so I say thank you. Thank you for what you have done. And thank you for what you're about to do. It is an amazing thing that God would bless a group of people and then that group of people would come together on a weekly basis and give back to the things of God. Thank you for trusting us with your resources. Thank you for trusting that we're going to hear God well and we will do exactly what God has told us to do with the resources that you work so hard for to bring here. And so we say thank you. We don't take it lightly. We know that for some, it is a sacrifice. And so we thank you for your sacrifice. And let me just say it this way too. Even in those times where you just can't see how to get it done, and you happen to show up at church and the finances don't show up with you, guess what? We'd rather see you than to see your finances. Because what we believe is the God we serve, he'll bless you when you get here, and the next time you'll have something come back in. And so we thank you. Thank you, thank you. Don't ever be ashamed to come to church even if you don't have nothing but you because you were so valuable. How do I know you were so valuable? Because it was for you, not your money, that Jesus died on the cross. And we say thank you. We thank you. But we know that we live in this world where every now and again we need money. So our first prayer is not for you just to bring something to us. Our first prayer is for God to get something to you. And let me just promise you that he'll supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And when you do that, we're already thanking you that you will also support the ministry that will allow someone else to hear the word of God the way you have and experience it at the level that you have. So once again, we say thank you. If you don't mind holding your envelopes in the air, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for another expression of your goodness. Thank you, God, because you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyhow. Yes. You woke us up this morning. You blessed us to be on our way. You allowed this church doors to be open, and you allowed us to come and assembly here so that we can not only give your name glory and honor and praise with our mind, my money, we can actually give your name glory and honor, and honor and praise with our presence. And so because we have done that, it's a sacrifice for some of us. Now, God, we just ask. We don't tell you. We ask that you will bless us with whatever we stand in the need of. Yes. Lord, not only bless us, bless us exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask the things according to the power that works in us. And so now as your ambassador, I believe that we have what we say. Thank you for blessing this people. Thank you for this people being a prosperous people. Thank you for this people being an obedient people. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll start the giving off followed by our deacons, our preachers, our deacons, our trustees, and then you, my sisters, and my brothers. At this time, would you please stand face the wall and the ushers will direct you from the rear.
We know that recently we've had many storms with home goings and injuries. But we know that if your soul has been anchored in the Lord, that you can overcome anything. Because he's got you.
scriptures. Genesis, Job chapter one, starting at the first verse, down to verse twelve, and then skip down to verse twenty through twenty-two. Yes, sir. Job chapter one. Uh huh. Verse number one through twelve, and then verse number twenty through twenty-two. From the King James Version of the Bible, it reads like this. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. Yes. And that man was perfect and upright yes. and one that feared God and eschewed or shunned evil. Yes, sir. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Yes. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels, yes. 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, she donkeys, yes, sir. and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Yes, my God. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone, about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. Yes, but Job said it may be that my sons have sinned yes. and cursed God in their hearts. My God. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro yes. in the earth, and from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? My For there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, yes. one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doeth Job fear thee for naught? Has not thou made a hedge about him yes. and about his house yes. and about all that he hath on every side? Uh -huh. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Uh -huh. My God. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, yes. and he will curse thee to thy face. My God. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Yeah. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. Yes, sir. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Yes. Let's get down to verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle, yes, sir. shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. Yes, sir. And naked shall I return turn thither. The Lord gave, yeah. and the Lord has taken away. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My God. In all this, Job sinned not, yeah. yes. nor charged God foolishly. Yeah. I want to preach just for a few minutes from the sermon title, Never Lose Your Praise. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Lose your your praise. Yes, sir. Help me preach. Say, neighbor. Yeah. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. The preacher's gonna preach. The preacher's gonna preach. Never, Never. Lose, lose your praise. Your praise. Oh, yeah. This sermon is designed to speak to one of our sermon topics for this month: yes, the will of God. Yeah. I can go ahead and let the cat out the bag early in the sermon. If you want to know what the will of God is, the will of God is for you to never lose your praise. Amen. Amen. That's just the will of God right there. I can prove it in scripture. It says, uh, give thanks in everything. For this is the will of God. I done already proved what the will of God is already. But since I did write a few more words on this little paper, 
I think I'll just go ahead and do a little, little, little extra. Can I ask you some provocative questions as we encourage you never to lose your praise? Watch this. How do you keep praising God when trouble comes to you on every hand? How do you keep a smile on your face when you are having, have had, or possibly is experiencing right now the worst period of your life? How do you keep your head up when there is financial struggle followed by worse financial struggle? When there is one death of a loved one followed by the death of another loved one? When there is one crisis followed by a worse crisis? How do you not lose your praise if it seems like all the prayers you've been praying not only have it been answered the way you want it, yes. but it seemed like they got worse when you started praying. Yes. As we do faith walking with 2020 vision yes, this yes, year, and as we embark upon a brand new month, the month of March, I simply came by this afternoon to remind us to never lose our praise. Amen. We can agree that not every day is going to be a sunshiny, blue sky day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I still want to remind you to never lose your praise. Amen. We can agree that life can be cruel and fairness can be rare sometimes. Amen. But I still want to remind you, never lose your praise. Yes, sir. We can agree that even when you're doing every single thing you can think of to please God, sometimes things still go sideways. Yes. But I still want to remind you to never lose your praise. Amen. See, praise, brother Arnold, praise is thanking God for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he is going to do. Watch this. Praise, brother David, praise covers your past, your present, and your future. Praise has the ability, Mr. Wilkins, it has the ability to remind you of how good he has been, how good he is, and how good he will be. Praise has the ability to not only remind you how good he has been, it has the ability to encourage you that he's still good right now. Praise also has the ability to forecast how good he's going to be to you going yes, forward. Yes, when you know that praise can cover your past, your present, and your future, then that ought to make some scriptures make a little more sense to you. Watch this. This scripture should make, or these scriptures should make a little more sense to you knowing what praise is. Psalms 34, verse 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. He let us exalt his name together. This scripture right here ought to make a little more sense to you now. Ephesians 5 and 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This scripture right here ought to make a little more sense for sure now. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. See, whenever the question is what is the will of God, now you know that the will of God is for you to always give thanks and don't ever lose your praise. You may notice that I didn't put any conditions on the situation. I'm not here to deny that you're going through what you're going through, but I'm here to remind you don't never lose your praise. See, I love God because I can still praise him for what he did for me in 1968 all the way back in Mississippi. I can still praise God for bringing me up as the 13th child of 14 kids when it seemed like it just wasn't enough to go around. I can still give God praise with my brand new pants with some hand-me-downs from my brother third up from me. I can still give you praise that even if we didn't have nothing but some buttermilk and some cornbread, 
praise him. We still had food on the table. What I'm trying to tell you, I can praise him for my past, but I ain't just going to praise him for my past. I can praise him for it right now because I don't know about you, but I shouldn't be here right now. He should have took me out this morning, but he woke me up this morning. I'm here to tell you that he is still blessing me to have a family and some friends. He's still blessing me to have a reasonable portion of health and strength. So I give him praise even though things ain't perfect. But I ain't going to stop there because if he was good in the past, and if he's good right now, I just believe I can forecast that he's going to be good to me down the road. I'm already praising him for blessing me because I know the God I serve, he's the same yesterday and today and forevermore. I ain't got to wait till tomorrow. I can give him a shout right now. I'm not talking to anybody up in here. So I'm just simply here to encourage you. And if, if I say it loud, if I seem like I'm yelling at you, I want you to get it real quick. Don't ever lose your praise. Is that all right? So then, so then, so then, if you would just allow me a few minutes. Uh, Minister Spicer, I want to theologically argue three reasons why you should never lose your praise. Three reasons why we should never lose our praise. Reason number one. The reason we should never lose our praise is because of how he has already blessed us. It's right there in verse number one through five. Watch this. The Bible says there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. Amen. And this man was perfect and upright, one that eschewed, that feared God and eschewed evil. And then he said he had ten keys. Mm. Now watch this. For some of us who are struggling to feed one child, right. that ain't too cool. But Job was struggling. The scripture tells us that Job was perfect or blameless. If people accused him of something bad, it wasn't true. He was upright. He was well thought of by other people. He feared God, or in other words, he was devoted to God. And he eschewed or shunned or stayed away from evil or the things that didn't please God. Amen. Now watch this. It appears in the scripture that because he was who he was, yeah. that God did some things for him. Yeah. It appears that God responded to Job by blessing him yeah. with 10 kids. Yeah. And not just 10 kids. If you tie verse number 2 and you tie verse number 4, it looked like he had 10 kids that liked each other. Amen. Oh, you done missed it right there. <laughs> you done missed it right there. Lord have mercy. Isn't it a blessing to even see in scripture where a family actually love being around each other and love celebrating each other? Because the Bible says he had 10 kids and when the sons went out and they had a feast in their houses, they would actually bring the other one to his day. In other words, I got a birthday party going on and if I can't get nobody else, I want my family around me. That's blessed right there. He said, I'm going to bring my brothers and my sisters and we're going to get together and we're going to celebrate. That's a blessing. But it looked like because Job was who he was, that God responded to him not by having 10 kids that got along. It looked to me in the scripture, in verse number, uh, verse number 3, it looks to me that he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels. Now watch this. It says 500 yoke of oxen. Any of us from down the way know that usually a yoke of oxen is two oxen. So in other words, he had a thousand. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. He had 500 donkeys and a very large household so that he was the greatest man in the East. It wasn't nobody that had it bumping like Job. Job had that bag on top of bags. Job, at 
at this point had been blessed materially better than anybody else. Amen. Now, most of us know the story of Joseph, so it's easy for us to focus on when things went sideways for him. Yes, but don't forget how he's already been blessed. Yes. Job has a message for us today that when we have been blessed with stuff we really don't deserve. Come on, God. And then when it goes sideways, God is saying, remember how I already blessed you. Don't focus on the bad stuff. How come you ain't still talking to me about them 7,000 sheep and them 3,000 camels? How come you ain't still talking to me about them 1,000 oxen? How come you ain't still telling me about I'm the greatest in all the East? See, I believe this. I believe that sometimes we forget too quick how good God has been to us. See, if you can't praise him for today, think about yesterday. Am I talking to anybody? Every now and again, we need to remember how good we've had. And we don't know we got it good when we really got it good. Now watch this, brother. I'm going to prove my case. I'm going to prove my case. Let me talk to the ladies in the house first. Watch this. God has been so good to most, if not all of us, that we don't even know. Watch this. Most of us, ladies, if you go home right now, most of us, and it's not maybe everybody, but most of us, I'm going to say probably like 99%. You can look in your closet and you got so many clothes that you don't even wear no more. Some of them clothes in the closet that we don't wear no more. Some of them okay. is some sevens. <laughs> some of them are some eights. Some nines. Some tens. Some elevens. Twelves. Thirteens. Watch this. Let me show you how. Let me show you how, how good God has been to us. Now watch this. Uh, okay. God has blessed you through them sevens, eights, nine, ten, elevens, twelve, thirteens, and ups. And it's not just a picture that you have possibly gained a couple of pounds along the way. It is a picture that God has been blessing you through the sevens. Through the eights, through the nines, through the ten. He has blessed you through all them sizes. And he is so good that he blessed you even when you couldn't wear it to keep it in your closet. But he gave you a new wardrobe so you didn't have to go out naked. He has blessed you with some more food that helped you get out by themselves in the first place. Am I talking to anybody? See, it's still as looking at, I got all this stuff now and I can't wear it no more. You ought to be like, man, God has been good to me for a long time. See, I ain't got my high school figure no more, but I'm good just where I am because he blessed me when I was at a seven, and now I might be in double digits, but God is still blessing me. Am I talking to anybody up in here? Okay, ladies, 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 just so you know, this equal opportunity up in this piece to the brothers. God has been so good to us. We can go home and we can look in our closet and we got all these clothes yes, sir. that we don't even wear no more because we can't. He has blessed us through that 29 inch waist. Yes, that 30 inch waist, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 50. It's not just a reminder that along the way we possibly have picked up a couple of pounds. It's a reminder that God has blessed us for a mighty long time. He blessed us through the 29 inch waist. And whatever your waist size is at this point, He's still blessing you. Because if you have to agree with me, if you're in your right mind, you ain't left your house not one day naked. You had some clothes on your back. And it's because God has blessed you. I'm not talking to anybody up in here. So you don't never lose your praise because you remember how God has already blessed you. And if God has already blessed you, you ought to clap your hands right there and give him a hallelujah good old praise.
to never lose your praise is because of what he has blocked you from. The scripture right there in the scripture verse number 6 through 12 it says now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and the Lord said unto Satan which comest thou then Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down the Lord asked Satan like where you been and where you coming from? Oh my God. Satan said, I've been to and fro in the earth walking up and down. Yeah. He said he's been in every direction uh -huh. on the earth. Yeah. He has been to the north, yes. to the south, yes. to the east, and to the west. I want to encourage you before I really get into the point. The Bible says, he said, I've been walking, which means that Satan is not omnipresent. Lord have mercy. Y'all don't even know when to shout. I'm going to get me a praise button up here, and I'm going to say something, and I'm going to hit the button, and then you'll know that that's when you get praise right there. He says, I've been in the north, south, east, and west walking. Yeah. Seeing where I can wreck shop at. I done walked in every direction and not every direction at the same time. That's why you can have one season of blessing and then you show up. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> Watch this. Then God did something strange to me. He said, Have you considered my servant Job? The amazing thing is, Job, say they ain't mentioned Job's name. Yeah. God was the one that mentioned his name. Yeah. Said, so have you considered my servant Job, since there's none like him in the earth? He's blameless. Yeah. Everybody like him. Yeah. He's devoted to God. He shuns evil. Uh -huh. Watch this. Satan says, is he all that right. for nothing or for something? Oh, wow. In other words, he says, the reason he's all that is because you done blessed him so well. He's like, he is all that because you have blessed him, you protected him, and you wouldn't let me get to it when I wanted to. He said that you got a hedge of protection around him, his house, and it's on every side. He know this, watch this, I'm talking about what God has blocked you from. He know this because he done checked Job out many times. Wow. Wow. It's gonna, the picture going to come. The picture going to come. If you only knew how many times God wouldn't let Satan get to you. times he done asked for you and God wouldn't give him you, a yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you only knew how God has protected you from the stuff you knew and the stuff you didn't know. See the older saints would say it this way. He's protecting you from danger seen and unseen. If you only knew many times that God has said no to Satan so that when he does give Satan a yes you ought to think about there's years of full trails of no that God has told Satan as it pertains to you. He has blocked you he has blocked Satan from doing all he wanted to do to you see you got to know that Satan don't like you. You have to know that he is not your friend if he had his way, he would actually kill you on the spot. But God himself will allow a car to come at you head on when Satan was like, get him. And God said, no. He'll push the car back. Might let you hit your head on the steering wheel, but he ain't let you put your head in a casket today. Am I talking to anybody up in here? You don't know but what God has blocked you from. You don't know how God has kept you from danger seen and unseen. You don't know how he has protected you. 
you. So stop spending all your time based on your trouble today. Because you ought to thank God that it ain't as bad as it could be. Am I talking to anybody up in here? Tell your neighbor he blocked some things for me. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. He protected you when you didn't know it. He kept you when you didn't deserve it. He blessed you when you didn't know you was being blessed. I'm talking about blocking some stuff. Can I come down your street? I'm talking about way back when. When he blocked you from catching a case when you should have. I'm talking about way back when. When you should have caught a disease, but you didn't. I'm talking about way back when. When you should have got pregnant, but you didn't. I'm talking about way back when. When you should have got fired, but you didn't. I'm talking about way back when. When you should have got evicted, but you didn't. I'm talking about way back when. When you should have lost your life. But he woke you up this morning.
seem to come together. You get up and you can't get your hair together. You get up, you can't get your outfit together. You get up, you can't get your nails together. You get up and it ain't nothing working in the house. You get up and everything is rolling wrong in the house. You go outside and ain't nobody want to speak to you. I'm talking about that day. What I want you to know, you still got to get up, baby. He said he will roll. Just get on your feet when you can. See, if you put your feet on the ground, when your feet hit the floor, that ain't your feet. That's Jesus' feet. And the Satan has to back up off you because your feet are on the ground. See, you got to know as long as you're on your feet, you got a fighting chance. But while you're on your back, he already got you. Am I talking to anybody up in here? I don't know about you, but I feel like preaching up in here. Oh, the Bible said he rose, rent his mantle, shaved his head. I'm just here to tell you, you do whatever you got to do to get on your feet. I don't know what it's going to look like for you, but do whatever you got to do. Don't you ever let your situation keep you away from God and the things of God. Get on your feet. I don't care if you got to come up in your pajamas. Come on up in here. Put your feet up in this place. Make sure you do whatever you got to do. And the Bible says, and he fell down and he worshiped. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. When you worship, you are reminding God who he is. And you are reminding God what God said about himself. Worship it. I don't care what you had to do. Shave your head, rinse your mouth, do whatever you do. Brush your teeth first, but come on up in this piece. When you worship, when you believe that He is who He is, and you start really thinking about Him as a thing, as opposed to thinking about your problem. You'll mess around and say what Job said. Job said, naked I came into this out of my mother's womb. And naked I leave. He says, blessed be the name of the Lord. See, when you are reminded who he is, he'll tell you what his name is. I'm talking about that name. Y'all know what I'm about to say? Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. On your worst day, when you just can't get it together, figure out a way to rise up if you have to fall down on your face to be reminded that he's a way maker. If you have to be reminded that he's a promise keeper. If you have to be reminded that he's a protector. If you have to be reminded that he's a provider. If you have to be reminded that he's a promise keeper. If you have to be reminded that he's the ancient of days. If you have to be reminded that he's your all in all. If you have to be reminded of just who he is. And when you think about who he is, I believe you're going to raise your head up. I believe your hands are going to go up in the air. And I believe you're going to remember how good he is. And I believe that the next thing you know, I not only have I not lost my praise, let's be the name of the Lord. Let's be that name. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? That man Jesus, the same one that came down through 42 generations. That name that came down and was born of a virgin named Mary. That name that could work over these dusty hills for 33 and a half years. That name that allowed them to put nails in his hands on a Friday. Allowed them to put a nail in his feet on a Friday. Allowed them to put him on that old, old rugged cross. But I want you to know that name didn't stop right there. Because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, he hung his head and he died. But I don't know about you. If I had been there, I would have told him, don't never lose your praise. It's Friday for Sunday morning is coming. From early, early Sunday morning, you got up with all, all, all power in his hands. Don't ever lose your praise. Thank your hands and your praise. Mm -hmm. I know he's all, all right.
things. Listen, you can lose some weight. You can lose a boyfriend or girlfriend. You can even lose a little pocket change, but don't you ever lose your praise. Because I heard somebody say when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Can I update that for you? I'm good with the blessing coming down, but I believe that when the praises go up, the blessing himself comes down. He'll come right there with you. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll tell you that you are his own. Hallelujah. Bless his name. I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good today. Woo, Jesus. truly say that I have a testimony so my test today even when our son is in rehab because he can't walk no more listen God is still good and right in the midst of his, his, his bedroom somebody ought to best mess around and give God a glory and praise and remind Brother the Things may not be good today, but look at all these 20 some, 30 some, however many years God has been good to you. And if He don't ever do another thing for you, He did more than you deserved in the first place. I don't know about you, so I'm going to stop talking about you. I know I didn't deserve it, but some kind of way He loved me enough to wake me up this morning. So I can preach another sermon all by myself about myself. Point number one, he woke me up this morning. Point number two, he woke me up this morning. Point number three, he woke me up this morning. Point number four, he woke me up. You ain't get this. He woke me up this morning. For those who can, if you're resting your feet, if you're not already, if you can, if you can, you heard the little sermon. I hope it blessed your heart. Let me show you what's Never lose your praise. The best way to get a praise that you could possibly question whether you lost it uh, is to have one in the first place. And you get a praise first and foremost by being on his team. The way to get on his team is to get with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You believe your heart that God is risen from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. If you're here today, you've never accepted Jesus Christ, you will be saved.
God can still be talking to you. We're going to move on in time. Give me a celebration. But at any point, right now or after, God's supposed to speak to you and you're going to come forth and put your hand in the hand of the man of God and get to know your new church home. We'll be here for you. If you don't mind, take a seat. If you don't mind, we won't be before you too much longer. Started drinking what was in the cup. 
He said, now this is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Yes, sir. We do it oft on the first Sunday of every month. Amen. Amen. That's our oft. And so we are writing the scripture. You ought to at least silently thank God for allowing you to be right in the scripture. Amen. Then he says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth his death until he come again. And therefore, this is what we do. We celebrate by obedience. We celebrate with this celebration of the communion. And with that being said, yes, sir. clear your mind. Ain't nothing going on outside this church. That's more important than what's going on right here. Yes, right here now. Don't get distracted. Yes, Lord have mercy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, thank you. for this cup and this bread. We thank you that you called it blessed over 2,000 years ago. We thank you, God, that you left it as a memorial for us. And now, God, as we eat this bread and drink this, of this cup, we do show forth your death, but we thank you for dying in the first place. And because of this, we are ever reminded through the sermon, we will never lose our praise. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
jumping over a little bit the bread that represents his broken body and the cup that represents his spilled blood. Everyone been served.